What's up soldiers? I'm playing the Zombies Map 5 on round 5 with 5,000 points and only 5 bullets in my gun. And oh, <laughs> look at that. It's 5 o'clock. Time to go watch 5 and 5. Play 5 on round 55. <laughs> oh man, this is really something. Gentlemen, lock and load. Viva la revolución! Any last words, Mr. President? Yes, Jack. Any superlative words of inspiration for our humble troops? Do not pray for easy lives, my friends. Pray to be stronger men. I guess I'm here to tell you how awesome an underrated 5 is, or something like that. As if there hasn't been enough hacks this past year making videos on this damn map. 5 was released as an on-disc map with Call of Duty Black Ops on November 6th, 2010. 5 has always been that other map. If you were to compare co-op leaderboard entries on Xbox for all the BO1 maps, you would discover that 5 has roughly 6 million fewer entries when compared to Kino der Toten, despite both maps being free and releasing at the same time. A large reason for this discrepancy was the accessibility of starting up 5 back in the day. You see, early on, the only way to play 5 was to either complete the campaign or to enter a code in the terminal. The same was true for Dead Ops Arcade, which required use of the terminal as well. So, for players, the only map they were initially greeted with when they loaded up Black Ops in 2010 was Kino der Toten. Eventually, Treyarch unlocked 5 and DUA for all players. Nonetheless, Kino was still the very first map listed in the level selection screen, so players typically opted for that over the other maps. Now, I understand the rationale for having 5 be a nice little surprise for players. Hell, I remember beating the Black Ops campaign and being astonished when I saw the intro cutscene for 5 start playing. It was certainly cool but having it be a bonus level of sorts certainly hindered its exposure to the masses, and I think that's a bit of a shame. I suppose there might be other factors at play as well when it comes to it being less popular than Kino der Toten. Kino was more accessible in terms of the gameplay experience, as it was much roomier, whereas 5 was a lot more claustrophobic. Knocked is, is dear to my heart, that's where it started, um, but then in kind of my, my, one of my goals with 5 on the disc was to kind of reimagine um, if that had all of the support we had nowadays and what we would do with that. So 5 is kind of like a, a fresh take on it and it's, it's as hard as it can, you know, get. Additionally, the non-traditional cast of historical figures might have also contributed to fans not liking 5 as much. Sounds like someone's breaking in. Just the QA team, Jimmy. Sit down. In retrospect, it is a bit weird to think that Fidel Castro was still alive when this map released. Uh, revive me! Attention. We are now at DEFCON 1. 5 was of course reimagined in Black Ops 4 with the classified map, which was also limited to the masses since it was a Black Ops Pass exclusive. With this remake, there were more playable areas, a different aesthetic, the ability to play as the OG crew, and some other changes such as the Pack-a-Punch area being No Man's Land, and even the ability for Nova 6 crawlers to spawn in all over the map, rather than just being restricted to the basement level like they were on 5. I think it would have been cooler to see a political cast of sorts be included as the playable characters in classified, but maybe certain figures would be too divisive for modern day Call of Duty, or perhaps there are legal issues with using the likeness of certain people, and that would end up costing the publisher some money. Guess I shouldn't have made those budget cuts. One component that Classified improves upon is the Winter's Howl Wonder Weapon, although I'm pretty sure that it's still undesirable to use in later rounds on that map as well. But at least there are several suitable alternatives for killing zombies in Black Ops 4. In the original 5 map, the Winter's Howl becomes ineffective as early as, like, round 25? It's a serious contender for being one of the worst wonder weapons ever created. This weapon, statistically, is insufficient to the task! 5 is also notable for featuring the Pentagon Thief, which made every kid in 2010 shit their pants. Like, you'd be waiting at the top of the stairs and be like, Oh crap! He's going for you, dude! Watch out! Then your teammate would act like a big man and hold their ground. They would say something like, <laughs> I got this, dude. He doesn't stand a chance next to my pack-a-punch H- Oh shit, mon! Then after taking your friend's weapon, he would teleport out of nowhere and take your gun too. Well, zap my ass and- Call me Dick! In Classified, they replaced the Pentagon Thief boss round with Hellhounds instead. Innovation at its finest. We are now at DEFCON 2. Like my other Zombies retrospectives, I'll be briefly discussing the high round scene at the time of this map's release. A playlist for the other retrospectives will be in the description below. Well, there wasn't much of a high round scene back in November 2010. Five had heavily cheated leaderboards, thanks to the infamous table glitch. An interesting feature in BO1 Zombies back then that not a lot of people know about or remember was that when zombies bled out, those particular zombies would not respawn, as the game thought they were actually killed. 
So players were able to sit on top of the table or other glitch spots and just let the rounds pass by without even having to be by the controller. Instead of wasting their time on 5, the more skilled players in the community tried their hand at the other maps since they were typically easier to play. These were the primitive days of course, back when grouping zombies on a consistent basis was a novel concept. And this was also the time when really dumb theories would circulate. Like, oh don't, don't kill that poor pig in the basement, because then there'll be more zombies on the map. Needless to say, 5 was really difficult on both solo and co-op. Since there wasn't a worthwhile wonder weapon, you had to bring the hordes upstairs to the electric traps, and that involved using elevators and teleporters, which were both unpredictable and a hassle to use. So instead, players elected to run circles in the war room, and just use the ray gun to kill zombies. Mato Master uploaded a round 42 co-op game in January 2011. You were certainly a big man on the game if you somehow managed to pass round 40 on this map. Hey guys, Mato Master here, I am upgrading HK21, a very good gun here in Slovakia. Uh, my strategy is to run in war room and kill zombies with machine gun. Uh, I only have 72 downs right now, uh, so wish me good luck. Eventually, time had passed and some players eventually said, Gentlemen, you can't fight zombies here. This is the war room. So players tried their hand at running in the top level of the map, which was worth a shot since the traps were located there. Again, it's important to recognize that player movement wasn't as developed back then, along with there being no knowledge of how to manipulate the window spawns to the player's advantage on the top floor. So the implementation and development of this strategy took a while to occur. But now people are capable of running the top floor strategy without much issue. I mean, the solo world record holder has like, what, round, round 200 and something on this map? What's his name again? Oh yes, TTS, that's it. Uh, what's that? Oh, he's a fan of the channel. Oh, <laughs> well, I'm flattered. What if we watch the Dead Ops Arcade documentary? <laughs> what, Dead Ops Arcade documentary? What? Who made it? Uh, I don't know. It's some really, not really well-known guy, though. We are now at DEFCON 3. I've always liked the map 5, but on a surface level, you would think that it has quite a few shortcomings. As mentioned before, the only viable way of playing on the map is to run on the top level and use the two traps. None of the weapons on the map actually work well, and most of the areas on the map are rendered useless later into the game as well. The other day I was taking a massive shit and thought to myself, what exactly makes a zombies map good? And that question warrants a longer discussion than just a little segment in this video. But it is a bit interesting, I think, because there are so many different corners of the zombies community, each with different aspects of the game that they enjoy. You have people who like completing easter egg quests and are invested into the storyline. Those people would probably dislike 5. Then you have more casual players that you would find in public lobbies, and they would probably find 5 to be too unforgiving. More intermediate players, the type you might find on Reddit, might appreciate the novelty of 5 and have fond memories of playing the map when they were younger. It seems like many high rounders think it's a worthwhile map as well. Then you have other people like custom map makers, who spend 10 months trying to make their map be competent on a technical level, only for the map to be a boring slog which fails on almost every other level. I'm more partial to the perception of the game from the high rounders, but sometimes wonder what exactly they look for in a map before they invest their time into getting a record run going on it. Is there such a thing as a fun map or strategy, when all the maps consist of repeating something ad nauseum for dozens of hours? Is it a matter of picking your poison? Is there one specific condition that must exist on the map for it to be good? Like a strong wonder weapon, balanced weapons, existence of traps, a map that's fast to play on, or is competition around the map a necessary component? I have my own theories, but I'll leave these questions as some food for thought. Another zombie group that fascinates me are these bastards in public lobbies. I decided to play an impromptu public match on 5, and this one dude on my team was getting so salty at people stealing his kills on the early rounds. Like, people are still getting worked up about public matches in 2019. <laughs> Listen in. I'm gonna assume it's a snow wolf that just chucked a grenade in my fucking window, you little cocksucker. Oh, come on, you bitch. Wow. Lou, get the fuck out of here. Go, go to your window, you dumb fucking idiot. Yeah, they're breaking down your window. Go worry about your shit. <clears throat> Watch out, snow. Just cover the windows, that's all I'm asking you two dipshits. Oh, oh god damn it. What, how did I get stuck in this door? Motherfucker. Oh cow, I shot his head right off. God damn, get- Fuck! I got- Why is he up my ass? Oh shit, I oh. This is lagging, like, this is lagging for me. If I get too close to zombies, I die. What the fuck? What? We are now at DEFCON 4. Per usual, I'll end the video with some fun facts and interesting features in the map that I think are worth mentioning. 
Robert McNamara is played by my boy Robert Picardo, who ended up playing the Shadow Man in later Zombies maps, and who even has a role in the Black Ops 3 campaign as well. I'm fairly sure that Nixon is the only character of the four who doesn't appear in the Black Ops 1 campaign. Also, the voice actor for Nixon funnily enough had a small role in Oliver Stone's Nixon film from 1995. He was also the voice actor for Akuma in Street Fighter 4. The voice actor for JFK on the map, Chris Anglin, also played President Kennedy in the 2008 film An American Carol. This is the greatest country in the history of the world. The top level and war room areas on 5 are taken from the campaign mission USDD, the one where you walk around with Hudson and then point a gun at JFK's head. The basement level of the map, however, is taken from a separate campaign mission called Rebirth, which takes place in a Soviet base. The clocks on this map are behind an hour. I guess Jimmy Z forgot to set the clock forward for daylight savings. 5 marks the first appearance of the Death Machine power-up. First appearance of the Bonfire Sale power-up, which you get if you kill the Pentagon Thief without letting him grab one of your weapons. It allows you to pack a punch your gun for only 1,000 points, and this power-up only returned again in Classified. Back in October 2011, I did an MPL challenge on 5 with a relax and hack. If you want to hear me as a young lad, well, <laughs> here you go. I don't know if this makes any sense, but would a ballistic knife be included? Since it's technically the Bowie knife? Uh oh. 5 is the only Zombies map with quotation marks in its name. If you turn on three of the telephones on the map, you'll get to hear a song from Eminem and Pink. Oh shit, turn on the volume. Eminem is gonna sue me. Some of the portraits on the top floor of the map are previous characters in the franchise, like Roebuck from World at War. Also over here, we have a portrait of Eyes Open, Operation Fortitude. <laughs> Sounds like a good alternative name for DUA2. Commencing Operation Fortitude and trying to keep my eyes open while playing this game. We are now at DEF CON 5. Security lockdown lifted. So, that's five for you. If there's a map you guys would like to see me do a future retrospective on, or have any other video ideas, let me know, and there's a small chance I take it into consideration. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Well, if you made it this far into the video, you're probably already subscribed. Or you're a jackass who skips at the end of videos. <laughs> Heck, maybe even both.